Zip guys, Roman here from Tech Guides, and in this video, I will show you the best keyboard and mouse settings for Counter Strike 2. I will show you a few key settings that you absolutely have to change in CS2, and I'm gonna walk you through how to set up an auto exec configuration file, which allows you to set up quick switch binds, jump row binds, a buy script so you can very easily buy using your keyboard, as well as a no clip bind and some other quality of life settings. These tips should really help you to get the competitive edge over your opponents and I really try to include the most meaningful changes to your configuration in this video. However, this is of course not a fully exhaustive list of changes or config options that you can do to Counter-Strike 2 and therefore if you know of even more useful config tips then definitely leave them in the comments below and I might even do a second video including all of your suggestions from this video. But with having said that, let's dive right into how to actually set up a auto exec configuration file for CS2. To find the location where the auto exec configuration file is stored, simply right click on CS2, click on properties, click on installed files, go to browse and within the game CSGO CFG folder, you'll find all of your configuration files. Now, if you don't have an auto exec CFG file yet, simply right click, click on new, text document, enter autoexec.cfg and open the file in a text editor. You can then simply paste all of the settings that I put into the description of this video into this file, reload the game and that's simply it. To set up a practice match, simply click on play, practice, competitive and make sure to enable grenade camera, infinite ammo and infinite warm up. Then select whichever map you want to train on and load into the game. Now, in terms of personal keyboard and mouse settings under movement, I personally switched out the walk and dock keys um, from shift and um, control to caps lock and left chip respectively. And the reason why I did this was because I don't really think it's very convenient to press left control. It's just all the way down here and you really have to spread your pinky all the way down. You can have to turn your hand. It doesn't feel very ergonomic. And now another thing that I changed here is obviously instead of shift walk, as many people are usually doing, I actually put shift on uh, crouch. It's highly up to personal preference, of course, but I usually like to be able to press this in order to shoot more accurately. And um, whereas on the other hand, if I want to walk and not make any noise, then I simply press caps lock, which is just much more convenient than going down here uh, to left control. Since I'm a veteran Battlefield player, I always have use on F. It's just how I have been ever since I played Battlefield 3. Um, and on the other hand, E I'm actually using to toggle to my knife. So once you're in the buy zone, which is identified by the screen outline on the minimap, you can either press B to get into the buy menu, but you don't really have to. You can just use the use button, which we previously bound to F to get into the buy menu, press F again to get out of it. It's kind of convenient, you don't have to like fumble down to B and then press escape or whatever, you just press FF to open and close the buy menu if you're inside the buy zone. One more little tip with the uh, buy menu is that you can now press left control in order to buy for your teammates. So now the weapon will actually drop on the ground instead of being in your hand, so you don't really have to buy it, get out of the buy menu, throw it to your mate. Of course, that's maybe more convenient if you just want your mate to actually get your weapon. Um, but you can just press right uh, left control, press the weapon that you want to buy, and as you can see, it will basically spit it out of your character. So to continue, I'd like to talk about the different binds that I put into the auto exec CFG file. And we'll start off with the buy script, which essentially binds F1 and F2 to buy helmet and Kevlar, as well as your primary weapon. Note that this is obviously just an example and you can modify this buy script to your heart's content. And I will also leave a link in the description below with more information on the different item names and just generally how you can set up your own buy script for Counter-Strike 2. Now with my shortcuts, we know that F1 is bound to buying Kevlar and Helmet. So as you can see, that just happened and F2 is bound to buying the primary weapon. Now, even though we actually bound this key F2 to buy AK-47 rather than M41S, um, it still actually bought whatever you have in the second rifle slot here. To buy utilities, we can simply press Y, X, Z and V. And as you can see, we just bought all of the utilities in the game. Now, if we get out of the buy zone and we want to use a smoke, for instance, we can just press C and throw it to get a very nice A main smoke. 
Moreover, you're of course no longer fumbling across your keys like 44444 to, for instance, reach your incendiary. You press simply Y, you got the incendiary out, or you press X for the grenades, and that's simply it. Now, when it comes to the placement of your smoke grenades, um, that's definitely down to personal preference. You can switch them to, to reflect what's actually shown uh, in the lower right uh, bottom of your screen here. Um, but for me personally, I really like to be able to very quickly access the smoke grenades because if you're running inside of a Molotov, you obviously want to be able to press C quickly, right click, and you're no longer getting burned. Now, since we've set this option up before launching into this private match, we can obviously also see where our grenades will land. So if we just select the nade, um, the, the smoke grenade, and then left click, you can see now a preview of where this will land and you can really nicely um, learn some nice lineups, for instance, here into a main. So the next thing in the configuration is the jump row bind, and this actually works pretty easily. Um, so we have bound this to left control. Um, as I mentioned, I bound a caps lock and shift to walk and duck. So control has become free. And um, basically the way it works is uh, you select whatever utility you want to jump row. So for instance, the smoke, you line up your jump row, then pull the pin with the trigger. So this is the left mouse button. And then all you have to do is to press the jump row key and it will always execute a perfect jump row. Now with these binds, you also have the introduction of no clip, which I put to H, uh, which allows you to quickly go back into the buy zone. If for instance, you wanna buy an AWP. The next option that I would highly recommend you to change is the auto resume sniper rifle after shot. By default, this is set to yes, which means that whenever you take a shot, you will resume your sniper rifle, whereas if you set it to no, it will actually remain unzoomed, which allows you to reposition. Now in CSGO, we actually mimic this behavior by using a quick switch bind and clicking that button as fast as possible whenever we fired a shot. However, as you might have noticed, in my configuration, there still is a quick switch bind. And the reason for that is that it's super convenient to actually use this to zoom out of your sniper rifle instead of actually having to zoom one step further before finally zooming out. Now, finally, I like to bind my mouse wheel down and up to something else than just cycling through the weapons because I think that's kind of useless. I wanna have one dedicated weapon or utility to turn up whenever I cycle through my mouse wheel. Uh, so in my case, I put this to secondary weapon when mouse wheeling down and primary weapon when mouse wheeling up. Um, it's very much down to personal preference what you bind to this, uh, but honestly, that's just what I like. Of course, you can then also bind uh, the middle mouse, which I personally just like to have as the ping mouse because this is what I usually do in uh, other games like Call of Duty. Now, the final key worth mentioning that I have set up is actually use mic. I've bound this to mouse five, which is actually the second thumb button here on my mouse, uh, which allows me to, while playing and aiming, being able to actually call out positions of enemy players. Um, actually, I think that's super convenient. Um, I can just press here and you can see on the screen, it turns on mouse activation. Um, I can still aim, I can still shoot, I can still walk, no problem while actually talking. So I don't actually have to take away my ASWD keys. Uh, my fingers from ASWD allows me to talk and walk <laughs> as well as to talk and shoot and Actually, if I had an AWP also to ADS while talking. Now, one key that I haven't really bound so far is the Q key. This essentially switches uh, from the previously used to the last used weapon. It's essentially what your mouse four key will do if you use my uh, configuration file, just much quicker, of course. And you have to press this twice in order to do that. It's kind of the QQ uh, thing. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what I'm actually gonna bound to this. Maybe I'm gonna use it for the nades. I'm not so sure because I think X isn't so convenient to actually access uh, to throw out your nades or actually the Molotov. Hmm, I'm not so sure. Maybe I'm gonna throw the Molotov onto X and then the HE on Q uh, so I can really quickly get both my smokes, my flashes, and then on Q I could get my HE out. Um, I'm not quite sure. I have to try this out in a life match to see what uh, works best for me, but just as an inspiration, it's something that you could do as well. But for now, that's about all the tips that I have for you in this video. Now, if there was anything in this video that you enjoyed, then definitely leave a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. If you know of additional keybinds or 
other nice tips and tricks for Counter-Strike 2, then also definitely make sure to leave them down below and I might actually include them in a future video. And also make sure to check out the sources in the description for this video. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.